a little bit of an update here. Alec Caho has chosen his transfer school. The former Alabama linebacker will now is now back in the Pac-12. He has committed to the University of Utah, the Utes. So the Utes get the commitment and the, uh, the services of one Brandon Alicajo. Wish him the best. Wish him well. Hopefully he can be a big-time star in this new program for the U- at the University of Utah in the Pac-12. But begin to now. Topic number one of the conversation, reliving the glorious play that was second and 26. It happened three years ago, January 8th, 2018. We know the setting. It took place Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Alabama, Georgia. Nick Saban, Kirby Smart, Jalen Hurts struggled in the first half. You know, Alabama couldn't get anything going offensively, defensively. It was hanging in there, though Georgia was making some some plays and big plays. I must say, it, the, uh, the game goes into halftime. Georgia has a 13 to nothing lead, and Coach Saban has a gigantic decision to make. Though he loves Jalen, though he valued Jalen, though he appreciated Jalen, though Hurts got the team into the title game, Nick Saban had to make a critical decision because it's offense. It needed some firepower. It needed something different. It needed some juice. It needed some life on that side of the football. And Coach Saban made the move to go to the true freshman then, Tua Tungavailoa, to start the second half. And the trio of freshman receivers, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs III, Devontae Smith, all three guys were geeked up. They were ready. They were excited. They were prepared to go. And we all know what happened. Tua hooked up with Henry Ruggs for the first touchdown, then he hooked up with Calvin Ridley in the end zone for a touchdown, and then, you know, Andy Papanastas could have won the game in the fourth quarter. All he has to do is make a 36-yard field goal. Come on, Andy Papa Johns! Couldn't make the 36-yard field goal, pushed it to the left. We go into overtime. Rodrigo Blankenship makes a 51-yarder for Georgia. It was 23 to 20. It was Alabama's turn in overtime. And Tua, the freshman mistake, took a bad sack. No! Took the bad sack. Nick Saban comes unglued on the sideline. But little did he know he was about to be on a 180-degree roller coaster as he goes from yeah, as he goes from upset to absolutely jubilant, sheer joy. Uh, d- uh, uh, Tua Tagovailoa finds Devontae Smith along the sidelines for a 41-yard game-winning touchdown. Saban throws the headset up in the air, runs on the field, calls it the happiest moment of his life. There's a dog pile on Devontae Smith in the end zone. Coach Saban getting that sixth national championship overall in his career to tie him with one Paul Bear Bryant. But as great as that moment was, and that moment was iconic, it was epic, it was historic. You had two freshmen and Tua and Smitty that jumped themselves into the hearts of the Alabama fans everywhere. When you look at the magnitude of that moment, you snatch victory from defeat, you take a championship away, from Kirby Smart, is this the greatest play? Is second and 26 the greatest play in the history of Alabama football? Right now, I'm going to go into my top five. I'm about to rank my top five moments all time greatest plays for the Crimson Tide. And for me, these plays, they go off of importance. They go off of significance. They go off of value. These plays are kind of those seismograph moments of where were you when this play happened? Like, where were you in relation to this particular play happening? So, at number five, for me, it would go 2012 Alabama LSU TJ Yeldon 28 yard make a man miss screen pass for a touchdown Bama got the 21 to 17 victory in that matchup there you know Alabama was up 14 to 3 for the most part and then in that game 
LSU gets two touchdown drives in there, including a touchdown pass from Zach Mettenberger to Jarvis Landry. The Tigers had a 14 and a 17 to 14 advantage. Alabama got the ball back with a minute 28 to go in that game, or minute 47. It was a little bit over a minute to go in the game. Bama had the ball on its own 28-yard line. Had to go 72 yards down the field to take the lead. And Coach Saban put the ball in the hands of A.J. McCarron and said, young man, go win the game for us. A.J. took the team on a five-play drive. Three of those plays were completions to Kevin Norwood, which sets up the screen pass. Great call from Dougie Nussmeyer. Doug Nussmeyer dials up the screen pass, gets it to T.J. Yeldon. Yeldon able to follow his blockers, made a, made a defender miss, ran 28 yards into the end zone, silenced the Tiger crowd in Death Valley, Tiger Stadium, Baton Rouge. Bama fans went crazy. The Bama players on the sideline went crazy. Alabama getting the 21-17 to win. A.J. McCarron emotional, and Alabama was able to take that game, take that play, and ride that momentum into the SEC championship game where it defeated Georgia and the national championship game where it defeated Notre Dame, getting back-to-back -back titles 2011 and 2012, but that was number five for me, but T.J. yelled in screen pass. Going on down here to number four, this was iconic. I mean, this was cooler than the other side of the pillow. George Teague stripping Lamar Thomas of Miami in the 1993 Sugar Bowl game to win the national championship, culminating the 1992 season. Miami Hurricanes were talking so much trash in that game. They were acting like, we going to beat Bama, we going to beat Bama. Bama can't hang with us. Bama can't ride with us. Bama don't got the guys that we got, and it was a defensive performance for the Crimson Tide, the group or the duo of Eric Copeland and John Curry, or, or John Curry and John Copeland and Eric Curry, excuse me. So Copeland and Curry sacked Gino Toretta, had him seeing stars all night long. Uh, Miami had was turn Miami uh, Miami had four turnovers there in that game, including three interceptions. George Teague took a pick back for a touchdown, but his biggest play of the game was Toretta. Hits Lamar Thomas on a, on a like post fade type of play. Thomas makes the catch, and he is on his way to the end zone. This is a dude that was not only a football player, but a track and field athlete as well. So, fastest guy on the field was Lamar Thomas. Nobody thinks nobody thinks Teague is going to catch Thomas. Nobody believes anybody would catch Thomas. He is on his horse, on his way to the end zone, but all of a sudden. George Teague hits another gear, runs Lamar Thomas down, takes the ball away from him, as Keith Jackson's famous call, Teague took the ball away from him. Teague's got the ball, and they tackle Teague back at the 12. Like, Lamar Thomas gets ran down by George Teague, has the ball stripped away from him, T goes the other way. Of course, the play does not stand because of a penalty flag on the field. But that effort by Teague, I mean, uh, took all of the air, took all of a swagger away from Miami. Bama wins the game 34-13 to capture its first national title since Bear Bryant. Moving on down here to number three. The field goal heard across the world by Van Tiffin in the 1985 Iron Bowl. Crimson Tide getting the 25 to 23 win. It was a 52 yarder by Van Tiffin. Now he missed a 52 yarder early in the game. He made the last one into the win. It was a huge drive by Mike Schumer at quarterback, an 80 yard drive to get Tiffin in position. The drive where Shula hits Gene Jelks with the pass. He hit Greg Richardson Jr. with the pass. Al Bell had the little end around reverse where Shula threw an amazing block to Spring Bell down the field. And it set up Van Tiffin 52 yards into the win. Bam! Made the field goal. Crimson Tide 50, uh, 25 for 23 to beat the Auburn Tigers in that matchup. Going on down for number two for me. Rocky Block, Terrence Cody getting his hands on two Daniel Lincoln field goals in the 2009 matchup between Alabama and the Volunteers. Crimson Tide winning that matchup 12 
to 10 offensively. Bama had struggled all game. The, the two games prior to that, Greg McElroy struggled in the passing game. Alabama put uh, Mark Ingram in the Wildcat. Had to do that against Ole Miss and South Carolina. It worked in both of those two matchups, but against Tennessee, Bama tired, beat up, beat down, had some injuries that week, and uh, thank goodness for Lee Tiffin, made four field goals in the game, and thank goodness for Terrence Cody getting his big paw on two Daniel Lincoln field goals. Alabama rolled that momentum into the SEC championship game where it beat Florida and it beat Texas in the national title, capturing its first title since the 1992 season. And then last but not least for me, second and 26, Smitty Tatua, number one for me. I mean, just due to, once again, the magnitude of the game, right? Georgia was up 13 to nothing at half. There were more Georgia fans at Mercedes-Benz Stadium than Bama fans. People really felt like Kirby was going to snatch it from Coach Saban. People felt like Kirby Smart was, was going to have the ability to hold on to the momentum and win his first national championship as head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs. But Nick Saban had another plan. He had another trick up his sleeve going into halftime. Appreciated what Jalen Hurts did, but wanted to provide some juice, some energy. Goes to Tua Tagovailoa. Tua in the second half put on a show. Three touchdown passes, including the game winner to Smitty, 41 yards. Nick Saban, the roller coaster of emotions, but Bama, Bama getting the win, 26 to 23 in overtime. Coach Saban there winning the national championship, his sixth, tying him with one Paul Bear Bryant. Thank you for watching Touchdown Alabama Magazine's YouTube channel. To continue to get the best in Alabama football content, subscribe here and turn on your notifications to stay connected with the hottest shows covering your Crimson Tide.